Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Kimmy Page Boutique. I'm Brooke Tannehill and today I am showing you how I created this rose gold Milky Way and leopard print design. This was a custom order from an amazing lady and I was so excited to make it for her. While I know there are a ton of Milky Way tutorials out there, I wanted to show my approach for making these cups. As always, all the products I use will be listed in the description below, and you may even find a coupon code or two that saves you some coin. Also, we just launched our Facebook group, so check out the link below to take advantage of a bunch of upcoming freebies and giveaways that you aren't going to want to miss. So without further hesitation, let's go ahead and get started. Part of this live was recorded in the A Little Extra Ink Epoxy Facebook group, so that's why you can see me in all of my glory here. But what I did is I started with a fully prepped and sanded 30 ounce skinny from Parish Tumblers, and I spray painted it with aged copper from Rust-Oleum Universal. So it's just kind of a coppery color, but I thought it was really great for the colors that we'll be using on the Milky Way swirl. I then mixed up some epoxy and I began to apply it to the cup very thinly over the entire surface. I like to do this because the epoxy method works the best for me to apply my glitters in the Milky Way style. So very, very minimal amounts. I would say either one or two milliliters on this cup. And since I'm using some chunky glitters that I'm showing you right here, I do add just a tiny, tiny bit more epoxy so that we can have a really good adhesion. After I let that sit for probably about a minute, what it does is it gets all the streaks out of the epoxy and just gives you a nice even layer. I grab my glitters and I start to show kind of what I'm gonna be using for this Milky Way. One of the colors that I do use is a mix between two other Glitter Heart Company um, colors that I think were just absolutely beautiful as they came together. And that was just a mix of one-to-one -one between Pop the Bubbly and Golden Rose. And I'll show you when um, I start to use that, which I am doing right here. When I start my Milky Ways, I like to try and do the swirl to where the top, like the top of rim, and the end of the swirl meet up in the same straight line. So when I start the rim at the very top, I want to swirl my swirl, I guess, at an angle that allows for both ends to meet in the same like vertical line. So you can see I did that there. And also another thing I like to do is I like to alter cuts of glitter. I don't usually like to put the same cut or same size of glitter right next to each other because I don't think that you get the depth that you want from these traditional Milky Way designs. After I finished up with the mix of Pop the Bubbly and Golden Rose, I grabbed Dreamsicle and I just come in with, and Dreamsicle is um, a chunky mix, I come in right next to that mix and just have it flow into the first glitter that I lay down. You do want some overlap and you just kind of treat it like you would do an ombre but you're just doing it in a swirl pattern. The next glitter I grab is called Strawberry Shortcake, and I put this on, but not on top, but on top of the custom mix that I had laid down first. So that way, again, I'm not having two chunky mixes right next to each other. And again, I think this is just adding dimension, and I really like how the variation in cuts add just different sparkles and butamus to the swirl that we're laying down right here. Finally, what I do is I grab Sweetheart, which is a really, really beautiful rose gold color from Glitter Heart Company, and I just fill in that remaining space. Now, once you get this last glitter laid down, if you're not happy with the blend, just like what I tell you with the ombres that we do, don't be afraid to come back in with the other, other glitter colors and just make sure that you're getting the blends that you like. I let that dry for about four to six hours and then I sealed this twice with Rust-Oleum Clear Gloss Spray Paint. And I waited probably about an hour between coats just to make sure it was good and dry and wasn't gonna cause any just kind of milky, get it, areas on my tumbler. But for this first coat, um, I mixed up, I wanna say probably a good 40 milliliters, just because we had two different chunky glitters that we used and just, just to get some good coverage. One thing you do not wanna do, regardless of what epoxy you're doing, is put too thin of a coat on because you're gonna stretch it, you're gonna get bubbles and fish eyes. Not a good idea. This cup has three coats of epoxy over the glitter, and now what I'm doing is I'm taking an orbital sander to smooth out any peaks and valleys that we have on the cup that are caused from the different cuts of glitter. 
Now, this is important because what happens when you have a chunky glitter next to a finer cut is you'll get peaks and valleys and almost waves to the cup kind of like what you see there. So the sanded parts are the high points of the cup and the low parts are more of the finer cuts or the valleys. So I'm taking the orbital sander, rotating the cup back and forth just to get as smooth and even of a surface as possible so that when we move into the next steps with the Milky Way mica powders and any other coats of epoxy, you just aren't building up more and more waviness to the overall aesthetic of the cup. I just go back and forth with the sander until I'm happy with the high and low spots and then I move to the bottom of the cup and I'm sorry I'm out of frame but what I'm doing is I am just holding the palm sander vertically and then just taking the cup and moving it down the side to round the edge so that I have a nice smooth edge to start this process. To apply the mica powders, I mixed up 50 milliliters of a little extra ink epoxy. And what I do is I pour 10 milliliters into two medicine cups. And the first color is bubbly that I'm putting right here. And it's a white um, mica powder that's super beautiful. It's got kind of a bluish shift to it. And then the next one I'm using is Fantasy. These are both from Glitter Heart Company and they are just amazing mixed in to epoxy. All I do is I take probably about two tips of the, the popsicle stick and add it to the cup. And then for the white, I just added a tiny, probably like two drops of white dispersion color. You can see me put the second one in there. Then I simply take a popsicle stick and make sure that the mica powder and the dispersion color are fully mixed into the epoxy. And that way you have a nice consistent color um, to add to the cup. Once the micas are mixed up nicely, I'm gonna grab my heat gun and go ahead and heat the surface of the cup just a little bit. The reason why I do this is because I want to introduce a little bit of heat to this cup, but not too much that would make the mica powders that we're adding, or the, I guess they're not mica powders, but like the mica colors that we're adding to the cup move. So what I've found is just by heating the cup a little bit, Moving into the epoxy, so this is first and foremost, you need to add a thin layer of epoxy to the cup before you add your mica powders. But what the heating the cup does is it just gives it the slightest bit of movement to really let the colors meld and really have more of that kind of whimsical feel to them versus if you were to put your heat gun or your torch directly onto the mica powders. When I have done that previously, what happens is that you get a ton of muddiness. You just have these huge, just kind of, not even streaks, but like stripes of the mica powders that you put on. So just by heating the cup ever so slightly, applying a, I would say probably a medium layer of epoxy. So for this one, I did probably about 15 milliliters onto the cup just to make sure I had it nice and coated. And what I love is after you have a sanded cup and adding epoxy to it, after you've sanded on it a bunch, it just comes back to life. And I, it's, it's so satisfying to watch. I'm going to briefly pop the bubbles because the last thing you want is a bunch of micro bubbles over the top of your beautiful glitter that you've laid out so wonderfully. And you also want to do this quickly. You don't want to introduce again too much heat to your cup. Since the Fantasy Mica Powder matches so well with the different glitter colors that we've chosen, I decided to start with the white. And the reason why I did that is because I wanted to add almost like a base layer to apply the Fantasy um, Mica Powder to, so it would really pop over the top of the glitter colors. So what you see here, I'm just using the tip of my popsicle stick to apply the dispersion color and the mica powder just randomly around the cup and then I'm also applying the fantasy right over the top of that so you can see that I'm really not putting the fantasy anywhere that the white is not and I chose to do that on purpose so that the colors will meld the fantasy pink would really pop out but we would also have enough white to where you get that like pretty great contrast that really makes a beautiful Milky Way. Then for some added depth, I did come in with just like a tiny, tiny bit more white. 
over the top of that fantasy just to make sure that we had a good amount of both colors on the cup. What I did next is I took the pad of my finger and I gently mixed the two colors together. Then I took my fingernail, granted it's under a glove, and create, um, create almost like the wispy. It's just like little wisp wispies and just separated the colors out. You can really see it there. And I just did that around the whole cup. I found that this keeps it more whimsical looking and I feel like it really showcases both mica powders. Then what I do is if there's any spots that I don't like, I just take my finger and I just wipe them up. So just pick up the epoxy with my gloved finger. This is why we added the layer underneath the mica powders and just put it into the paper towel. This is just the way you utilize to get the extra bits off that you don't like and it creates a very successful cup. I did heat this just a little bit to get some movement, but I think it really paid off and I love the way that these turned out. I let the cup cure and then it was decal time. I used two really great vinyls for this. One was textured and another was a holographic and I applied it to the cup with her name and some leopard print that I thought was really cute with this design. Now, I did both vinyls at once, but just if you don't like that, that's completely fine. When you use a holographic, you can see every nook and cranny. So you can see the holographic over the top of the textured vinyl. It didn't bother me, but if it bothers you, you can simply apply the one vinyl first, do a coat of epoxy, and then apply the second coat of vinyl after that. And you won't have the little seams that you see in the leopard on this cup. I didn't record it, but I actually had extra leopard print over to the side and I just applied it every kind of so often on the cup and the bottom just to add a little bit of oomph and I thought it was super cute. But mentioning vinyl, I did take the extra step of sealing this because it was a holographic over a textured and because it was layered, I did not want to take a chance of the leopard lifting. So I applied quick coat by CC DIY over the whole entire decal and I let that dry for a good probably hour, two hours and then it was time to move into epoxy. This cup needed two final coats so I mixed up about, I wanna say between 15 and 20 milliliters each time of epoxy and just took my time applying it evenly across the whole cup, making sure I get good coverage over that decal and that there wasn't any lifting and you still had that amazing ALE shine that they are known for. I really think that right here in this view, you can see just how beautiful this cup is with all the depth and dimension because pictures just do not do it justice. I let the cup dry for about four hours between coats, but after the second coat, it was good to go and this cup turned out absolutely beautiful. I'm obsessed with it and I actually considered changing my name to Selena just so I could keep it for myself. As always, thank you for watching. It means so much to me. If you like this tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see future videos. You can also ring the bell so you are notified for all future cup making goodies. Thank you again. I love you guys. Bye.